Hi, this is Professor Scott Norman at Pittsburgh State University, and we have another AC lesson in our automotive lab. Today we're working on a 2013 Cadillac ATS, and this vehicle has an internal heat exchanger. So a lot of newer vehicles, we are starting to see external, I'm sorry, internal heat exchangers that are in the AC system where the, um, where the AC liquid line and the AC suction line are connected together uh, as a heat exchanger. So that liquid line is trying to heat up, trying to warm up, trying to raise the pressure of the suction line and that uh, suction pressure, which is cold, is trying to uh, cool down the liquid line before it gets to the, uh, to the TXV valve. So what I wanted to see is I wanted to see what type of pressure differences we would see on this particular unit. Now obviously it depends on where your service ports are on this particular vehicle. So the high side service port on this vehicle is right in front of the internal heat exchanger, but the suction line is after the heat exchanger. So I will show you a, a picture of the uh, heat exchanger. Okay, you can see the TXV on the bulkhead. And you can see the power dome right at the end over there. And so the power dome is where you're gonna put your CO2 when you wanna do the um, TXV test. And if you take a look at the liquid line, which is the small line and the suction line, which is the large line, uh, coming out of the TXV, they connect to each other through what we call a heat, internal heat exchanger. So this tube right up here, this tube right there as it's coming up. Okay, so you kind of have a tube in a tube is what you have. So the, so the, so the high side liquid line is gonna be on the outside of that tube and the suction line is gonna be on the inside of the tube. And so you can see that at this point right here is where they connect again. And so you got your, you got your liquid lines coming out and you got your suction line right here. And so when you take a look at the surface fittings, the, um, the high side surface fitting, uh, as refrigerant is going into the heat exchanger, you're measuring the high side surface fitting um, pressures at the very beginning of the heat exchanger. So would not expect to see any major differences uh, with the pressures. If you take a look at the uh, suction line or the low side surface fitting, it comes after the heat exchanger. So, so the um, so the low pressure vapor coming out of the TXV is going all the way through the heat exchanger, being warmed up by this liquid line, uh, warm refrigerant going into the heat exchanger, and so we would expect the um, the uh, the low side pressure to be probably higher than normal. You're not expected around 30, not at 25. Right now in the shop, it is 71 degrees, 34% humidity. We have a fully warm vehicle. Right now, the vehicle is doing a performance test. Uh, we have it on full code, the blower on high. We have it on recirculation, and we're blowing out about 39 degree air. And so what's unique about this vehicle is that we're not seeing the system try to cycle off or anything like that. Uh, and my pressure uh, is, looks like it's a little bit above 30 PSI right now. It's a little bit higher than what I would expect on a normal AC system. The high side pressure around 150, so this is kind of what I would expect. But the key is, is that, it, is that the low side is just a little bit higher because of the internal heat exchanger. Now, while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and turn off the system and we're gonna see what type of equalization we have on the vehicle. Okay, so I turned the system off and hopefully we got that big jump in pressure that we normally get on that low side pressure. So it looked like it jumped from 30. I, it's hard to read the gauge backwards on my gauge, but it, I can see that jumped up pretty good. And the low side looked like it jumped down a little bit. And now we are slowly equalizing. So the TXV, uh, when I shut it off, it was open because you know you could see that was open because it jumped up quite a bit. Uh, it wasn't all the way closed. And then uh, as the system um, was shut off and the pressure started to rise, the TXV closed down. And so now we are waiting for it to equalize. I got my timer on here on my stop on my on my phone so I can kind of see the exact amount of time as far as uh, what we have but we're going to sit here and we're going to watch for a few minutes and we're going to see um, what the equalization time what the normal equalization time is on this vehicle to try to determine if there's any restrictions in the system uh, you know if, if the um, if the equalization time is, is too long 
you know, the normal, then then we're going to consider that, you know, that there is a, um, uh, a possible restriction in the system. Uh, if the equalization time is too quick, then we could assume maybe that the TXV is a, is a stuck open and it's not regulating properly, you know? And so, and so this is a test that I do. I tell my students to do for every single vehicle that you do. When you turn off the AC system, watch the equalization time before you turn, uh, uh, I'm sorry, um, before you disconnect the, uh, the, uh, the uh, gauges so you have an idea of what's normal. So we're gonna sit here and we're gonna watch this for a little bit. Okay, so it looks like we about equalized out and that was uh, roughly over uh, four minutes of time, okay? So again, expected that's a normal uh, time. I've seen it quicker than that. I've also seen it a lot longer than that. You know, every vehicle is a little bit different. So this is why you wanna do this often to try to determine the baseline.